Hello and welcome to the Kemanas Park Highlight Show. This week, we'll recap the race card from Saturday, March 16, 2024. Saturday's feature event was the second running of the Henry W. Jagai OD JP Trophy Race. Let's begin with race one. This was an optional claiming event for three-year-olds and up a 12-horse field reduced to seven eligible starters with the scratch of Rocket Lily, Rum Puncher, Shy to Princess, Queen Zan, and a Quantum Dancer from boxes three, five, seven, eleven, and a twelve, respectively, making it a wide open contest. Field in line for the first, they're off. Thalos gets a good start, breaking well in the middle. John P in the blue with the white cap, also in the center, beginning to tack across to Wallace. Curling's flight in the yellow races right against the stand fence. In behind them, that's Adi's choice in the black cap, but Thalos is running pretty quickly. Curling's flight right there, and in between them, John P in the blue and white. These are the three main contenders as they charge past the three and make the way now toward the final quarter. Thalos and John P matching strides. Curling's flight within striking distance. Adi's choice has backed out of it. Battle Rouge has been switched toward the center but still has a lot to find. The three principals have left the quarter pole. John P in the center. Thalos right there on the inside and Curlin's flight nearest to us. And it is a tight fight between these three. They're inside now the last furlong. Curlin's flight under the stands. Right there in the center. John P beginning to come across and making late progress. That's Baton Rouge now asked to sprout wings but it's Curlin's flight just the leader. Baton Rouge gaining with every stride. They drive toward the line. Curlin's flight meets Baton Rouge. Then these choice. Uh, John P traditional boy has finished back in fifth the 15 to 1 outsider curlin's flight takes the day's first with jockey shane richardson in the saddle for the connections of trainer michael hall and owner jennifer hall an upset win uh, to start the regular six at uh, 15 to 1 curlin's flight with shane richardson riding for michael hall and jennifer hall as uh, they get the job done in the opening contest a half a length clear off my selection baton rouge who looked to have something to offer there in the final half of forum but just didn't have enough to get by Curtin's flight in third was number nine D stars fourth went to the favorite John P and fifth for the high five a traditional boy Saturday's second race was a maiden condition event for native bred five-year-olds and up going five furlong straight a small field of six for the lesson to five with a Sir Ganga Jamuna from the five draw deemed a late non-starter ready for a start they're often racing Breaking to the near side and really coming to right toward the fence, that's in the spirit. Right in the middle, that's Cayman Prominent, along with Esuzi Me Goodbye. The gray crushing power is right there too, and left out of it just to, right now, that's King Rick. They come out of the chute and head toward the, the two and a half, the two furlong point, and it is making the runnings that is a caveman. Caveman in front, crushing power is right closest to the rail in between horses. That's a Suzy goodbye. Hustled up and asked for more that in the spirit. King Rick over on the far side on the vigorous left hand whipping as they're out to the chute and coming to the furlong, furlong and a half pole. And it is making the runnings. Caveman in front on a good looking lead to excuse me goodbye trying to chase coming on on the far side that's king rick but it is caveman in front and looks to be in charge of race number two caveman running away from these king rick running best of the rest caveman in front king rick trying to make a race of it but caveman beats king rick by about two lengths running on for third that's excuse me goodbye crushing power and in the spirit caveman emerges from the pack and finally shakes his maiden tag with a notable equipment change of blinkers off and visor on they completed the 1,000 meter course in 1 minute 5 and 2 fifths of a second with a win margin of 2 and 3 quarters of a length. So Caveman uh, gets to do in, in race number 2 and uh, Ramon appeared the Saturday for Turner Delroy Wisdom and owner Desmond Dallas. Caveman gets the job done in the second event. King Rick ran a brave race to be second and make a note of that one. 16 to 1 completed exactly which return $615. They should be goodbye in third and uh, crushing power completes the frame. Race 3 on the card was an optional claiming event, 3 year olds and up competing, going 1400 meters. A modest field of 8 declared to go postward. Newly licensed trainer Oralo Chin was looking for his first win with his even money bet, Biblical Legend. 1400 meters, 7 furlongs are there off. 
A mule train misses it, gives away a huge jump as the leaders charge down the back stretch and make their way now toward the final. Six Thunder Strike kept wide, has that lead beginning to come across a bit. Dancing in the breeze is a close up second, just a length down as they leave the six. Biblical Legend races on the rail. Sunshine Cat in the pink ride with the mob moving out wide. Maybe six lengths separates that first bunch. Last hurrah is a further four lengths in behind with So Magnificent as they leave the five and a mule train at the back of the field. They make their way toward the half mile and the top of the bend. They're about to get there now, dancing in the breeze and Thunderstrike match strides with Dancing in the Breeze, just the leader, ride with the mob now running three wide, now asked to take them on. Thunderstrike is right there. These three are abreast as they leave the 716th. There goes Sunshine Cat asked to shine, now beginning to make steady progress as they leave the three. Biblical Legend needs to find three and a half lengths. So magnificent, a further two lengths back, a break to Mule Train, and a last of all, it's a last hurrah as the leaders will now come thundering into the top of the lane, a quarter of a mile to run. It's still wide open. Sunshine Cat in the pink. Biblical Legend on the outside in the blue and yellow. Over on the rail. That's so magnificent. Thunderstrike looks to a run of the steam. But it's Biblical Legend now who takes that lead. Rider the Mob has gotten rid of the rider as they charge past the furlong pole. It is Biblical Legend on the outside. So magnificent down against the rail. They make eye contact briefly. And now so magnificent and Everton Stone begin to come away. So magnificent opening up two or more lengths. We'll win it by maybe three in the end over Biblical Legend. Mule train running on strong in the end is third. Thunderstrike is fourth. Sunshine Cat is fifth. A mild upset by the 11 to 1 bet. So magnificent with jockey Everton Stone in the saddle, making it back to back wins for both jockey and horse since the last time out on the 2nd of March when she released her maiden tag. So, a notable upset there with uh, So Magnificent at odds of 11 to 1 with Everton Goosey Stone in the saddle between Everton Calder. They get the win. Over the favorite biblical legend, and the third was Mule Train. Thunderstrike completes your superfecta. Race four was a restricted longest event, going six furlongs or 1200 meters. A seven horse field declared to start, where trainers Gary Sobrati and Anthony Baba Nunes had one entry each in the lineup, with the remaining spots dominated by champion trainer Jason Acosta. They're off and racing. She's my hedge fund, misses it, and is left at the back of the field. Legit Boss blasting to an early lead as they head toward the five furlong point. It's Legit Boss in front of She's My, She's a, she's a Mirage. Right there in third, that's All for Love, racing in fourth. About five lengths off the, the lead, that is a Fred the Great. Then behind Fred the Great, Life is Life. Then comes a brown skin girl and hopelessly out of it at the moment that she's my hedge fund. They've gone past the four and head toward the three. And it, legit, it is legit boss on a three quarters of a length lead from... She's a Mirage racing in second as they pass the three. Hustle up and coming nicely, that is... A, Fred the Great, We're also coming on the rail, that is all for love. About five lengths before we come to... Sh Life is life, brown skin girl, and hopelessly out of it, that is, uh, she's my hedge fund there at the top of the lane, and it is Fred the Great right on the rail, that's legit boss in between runners and coming on nicely, that is la the all for love, and now all for love, points from Fred the Great fighting back on the outside, it's all for love in front, Fred the Great trying to get to all for love, but all for love driven out, it's all for love traveling nicely at the end, and all for love goes on to win by maybe three and a half lengths from Fred the Great in second, then comes legit boss and uh, running on for fourth that's brown skin girl a good ride by last year's champion jockey dane dawkins aboard the gary sobrati conditioned all for love getting the better of the importy fred the great who finished in second position legit boss was third and brown skin girl in fourth trader gary sobrati has done it again and i'll tell you a few years ago there was a similar type of a scenario where wayne the custody had maybe five horses in a race, and Gear Sobrati had one horse in the race. And guess what happened? Gear Sobrati won the race, and uh, the other five runners for the way in the Costa camp had to settle for minor placings. And he has done it again. This time around, it's Jason Acosta, who has five horses in the lineup, looking to have the race all sewn up with Fred the Great. And who wins the race? Gear Sobrati. I don't recall the name of the horse right now, but I'm quite sure I'll be seeing Gear in another few minutes or so. Uh, at the North Lounge landing, and I asked him to remind me who it was again. But well done, Gears of Bradley, getting off all of the sprint at six furlongs and uh, out finishing for the great and legit boss. And that was indeed a very, very sharp performance by all for love. Turn for home, right upside, legit boss and Fred the Great. And thereafter, it was basically 
all over Bar the Sorted. Good ride by Dane Dawkins and a much improved run from All for Love. Saturday's fifth event was a maiden condition race for native bred four year olds and up, a nine horse field going seven furlongs of 1400 meters. Female jockey Natalie Berger was aboard the 92 bet, Sir Wan Dong for trainer Patrick Fong. Start are now ready. They're off. Fair start. Finney just misses it at the back with glittering magnum as they charge away down the back stretch. So Wang Don has taken the lead early. Glittering Magnum now closing to within a length. Dimitri P races back in third as they leave the sixth. Atomic Energy and Affini now race as a team as they go flashing now toward the five. Cosmic Force is settled in behind the front bunch just about seven lengths off it with Roaring Thunder joining that one as they leave the five. A break back to double the cash and a Tequila Flight not flying at the moment. They make their way toward the half mile, about to go spinning into that turn, glittering magnum on the rail. So Wang Don on the outside, slotted in between them. That's Finney. These three in a line as they drive past the 716th. Cosmic Force now beginning to make ground, needing to find four to get to them. Dimitri P is under an urge as they leave the three. So two roaring thunder, the rider pumping that one along. Behind them, atomic energy, and the gap opens up to the pair of Tequila Flight, just leaving double the cash at the back of the field. About to come into the lane, a quarter of a mile to run, still wide open, Finney on the outside, down against the rail, that's Cosmic Force who has it. Trying to close up Glittering Magnum, looking for room against the rail. So Wang Don is racing out wide, Dimitri P asked to come on, but Cosmic Force under a hand ride inside the final furlong. It is Cosmic Force coming away from them. Cosmic Force beginning to open up with the utmost of ease inside the final 16. It's terrific Tevin Foster, an afternoon stroll for Cosmic Force. Tevin Foster hasn't moved a hand. They win by maybe six or seven over Glittering Magnum. Then Dimitri P. Close between Finney on the rail and So Wang Don out wide. The even money favorite Cosmic Force with the terrific Tevin Foster in the saddle for trainer Ryan Derby and the owner's AKC Stables. The three to one bet Glittering Magnum was second. Dimitri P. Third. Sir Wang Dong and Finney completed the other high five spots. No problems there for the big favorite, Cosmic Force, and that was Tevin Foster on an afternoon stroll, an armchair ride. Very impressive performance here by Cosmic Force, and that's one to note for non winners of two. Really won very convincingly with being asked little inside the final two for Six cents clear at the end. Completing exact was Gisharn Magnum, so the top two jocks in the land. The leading rider, Tevin Foster, gets a better off Radish Roman, and their exacta returned $808, and the Quinella Plus is a must, $906. So the top two riders in the top two spots, and you get big dividends there for the exacta and the Quinella. Look at the triple. $59,695. So the triples have been paying through the roof so far today. Over 500,000 race uh, one to three sequence. Over 100,000 races two to four sequence. And the three to five sequence goes 59,000 plus. So the triples, very big so far today. We take a break now on the Caymanas Park Highlight Show. And when we return, we recap the second half of the races from the Saturday card. Welcome back to the Kimanas Park Highlight Show. We continue our recap from Saturday, March 16th. Let's pick up at race number six. This was a restricted allowance event going a distance of 1,100 meters or five and a half furlongs. A 14 horse field declared to go postward with the six time champion jockey Omar Walker securing a mount aboard the Matthew Thomas conditioned Acknowledge Me. After holding them a bit. They're off and racing. Kai on the go, Bernardo Quick, on Captured Empress and Speedy here. Those are the ones that's dwelling at the back. Joyce Golden, last in first out on that lead. Bazinga follows in second. Cappuccino is right there too. Then comes Acknowledge Me. Royal Ashes, they pass the four. On Captured Empress, recovering after that bad break. Speedy here is also in the mix. Right against the rail, that's James in the middle. And coming down, that's Uncle Nub behind those. Bernard the Quick, hooking reverse, Ella Fortunado, then comes the Odd Stepper, recovering that sky on the go, and racing at the back of the field, Mrs. Slinders, they're coming at the top of the lane, Joyce Golden, attacked by Acknowledge Me on the outside, it's Joyce Golden, Acknowledge Me, Bazinga, right against the rail, also trying to come on, that Cappuccino, out wide, speedy air, and right against the rail too, that's the grey. 
Royal Ash, but it is Joy is Golden. Fleet of Foot coming to the half of prolonged pole. Joy is Golden getting out of the grasp of these, and it's a double foot. Terrific having Foster. Joy is Golden beats these by about six. Bazinga is second. Then comes a odd step, Royal Ash, and maybe uncaptured Empress in fifth. A big run by the big two to one favorite, Joy is Golden, coming off the pace to land a six and three quarters of a length wind margin and giving Tevin Foster back-to-back -back wins bazinga finished in second followed by stable companions hot stepper and royal ash who were the other top four finishers race seven on the saturday card was the harry jagai memorial trophy a maiden condition event run in honor of the late racehorse enthusiast and avid racehorse trainer at kemanas park who saddled 341 winners throughout his career field in line for the harry jagai memorial trophy 1,300 meters, six and a half furlongs thereof, and Papidon misses the start with Queen Vaughna. Shani Starr took off quickly, harassed early by paperwork as they flashed past the six. Rack them in between horses, the soul warrior right there too, Rockola racing down against the rail. Captain Sparrow takes a wide route. Brownie Brown races right there on the fence. In between horses, Brenda Boy. Design Diva and the general team up in behind. Queen Vaughan are now asked to make some late progress. And at the back of the field, it's a Pappy Don after the slow start, not yet recovering. They've left the half mile and go spinning into that turn, approaching the final 716th. And Shani Star under a tight wrap leads up by some two lengths. Rackdam now going in hot pursuit and cutting into that lead as they leave the 3 8 pole. The Soul Warrior races up next. And a boy hidden from view on the outside. Rockola has made good eye-catching progress. The general in the all-black races up next as they come thundering into the top of the lane. They're approaching the quarter pole and Shani Star attempts to go all the way and continues to deny them. Rack them in the green racing toward the outside. Rockola now moving in between horses and Brenda Boy kicking in out wide but it is Shani Star out in front. Terrific Tevin Foster. He's looking for a three-timer and it looks as if Shani Star will give it to him inside the final 16. Shani Star is roaring away from them and will romp the Harry Jagai Memorial Trophy, winning by maybe double digits. Second goes to Captain Sparrow. And then Brenda Boy Rocola, paperwork, has finished in fifth. Another brilliant ride from the informed Tevin Foster taking the pack from gate to wire and securing a natural hat-trick aboard the Lawrence Fremantle trained Shani Star who beat the favorite and second place finisher Captain Sparrow by eight and a half long lengths. Congratulations uh, to the triple winner, the first triple of the day today. Races one through three, $512,921. And look at the amount wagered, $300. Now that's what you call an exponential return on investment. Where in the world can you invest $300 and get $512,000? I don't know anywhere else. So kudos to Supreme Ventures. Racing and Entertainment Limited, and of course, racing from Cable Park gives you opportunities to win big bucks. Congrats as well to the Reggae 6 winners. Three winners of the Reggae 6, each receiving over 1.4 million. Now, that's a good day in the office any day, and that jackpot now jumps to over $90 million. And remember, the Reggae 6 mandatory period is scheduled for the 1st of April, and that's going to be just a couple of weeks' time. Race 8 was a restricted allowance event for native bred five year olds and up. Non winners of four, importees five years old and up, non winners of three. A decent field of ten declared to take on the five furlongs course with betting stretched right across the board. Almost went to the ground. They're off. First start, great win, gets a good one. Legal bomb is tacking across already and showing good early dash. Near to us, Sugar Daddy is also showing a usual speed along with posing already right against the stands. Whiskey in the orange race is just in behind them with that group, but Sugar Daddy may just have the overall lead. Legal Bomb in the green with a red cap in the center now taking aim on that leader. Posing already is the one racing right against the stand fence. Toward the far side coming on, that's a Jaguar trying to close the gap, but the Sugar Daddy under a vigorous ride holds the advantage. A Jaguar now trying to cut into it with Legal Bomb. Posing already is nearest to us under the stand fence, but they drive away toward the final furlong and the battle up front is on. A Jaguar Jaguar now coming through to grab that lead from Sugar Daddy. Here is posing already, kicking in on the rail. It's Jaguar on the far side. Great Wayne also showing some late dash. Jaguar, Great Wayne on the far side. Posing already with us. These three will flash past together. It's tight between posing already, Great Wayne. Jaguar looks to be third over Whiskey. It's also close. Could be four or five or back in fifth. 
A fourth consecutive win on the day for Tevin Foster aboard Robert Pearson's posing already, who put in a spirited final furlong run to edge the challenging Great Wayne by just a marginal neck on the line. Four consecutive victories there for Tevin Foster, and he's really riding extremely well. And he started off the day on 26 wins, six clear of Radish Roman. He's now 10 clear. He's on 30 wins, and Radish Roman on 20. So uh, the Sneaky Fox better get uh, busy <laughs> because Tevin Foster is really uh, opening up some daylight between himself and uh, his closest rival. Four consecutive victories, and that was posed already near the stand side. A very good ride by Tevin Foster. The penultimate race on the Saturday card was a competitive restricted allowance event with a 15-horse field going five furlongs straight with two chance rides, firstly that of jockey Daniel Thompson replacing Chevron Townsend aboard Xylophonic Steel and Abigail Abel in the Mount of Rose Apple replacing the injured George Samuda. They're off on racing. Simply Sensational gets a good start, Bosey closest to us along with Sugar Sugar showing the usual speed. Also there on the near side, that's Maggie's trick. Those are the ones on the near side. Right in the middle, that's Zane's princess, along with charming sound Rose Apple. Tucking toward the middle, that is a Sugar Sugar. Right on the far side, that's a Military grade, so military grade leads the group toward the far side. Zane's Princess, natural dancer is quite prominent. Also there, that's Miss Linton, Maggie's trick. They're spread right across the track as they come toward the furlong and a half pole. Military grade, really showing well, but natural. it's natural dancer. Now that hits the front from Zane's Princess, trying to stay with natural dancer, but natural dancer is in front and begins to pull away from Zane's Princess. Uh, and uh, military grade has fallen, but natural dancer is not for catching today. Natural dancer pulling off this one by about four lengths. Zane's Princess is second. Bosi runs on to be third. Looks like Maggie's trick fourth. Sugar, sugar, and simply sensational in a photo for the fifth spot. 2023 Most Improved Jockey Radish Roman powers home the 9-5 to five bet natural dancer for owners Houston Stables and trainer Gary Sabrati. Beating Bosi who ran on in second, the 8-5 to five favorite Maggie's Tricks was in third. Simply sensational and Sugar Sugar were the other top five finishers. So Natural Dancer uh, gets a win in race number nine. And as I said, we needed to hear from the Sneaky Fox because it was all about Tevin Foster on a four-timer. Four consecutive victories for Tevin Foster. Races five, six, seven, and eight. So it was uh, really necessary for, for us to hear from the Sneaky Fox Radish Roban. And he made very good use of the opportunity and got Natural Dancer into high gear by midway of the contest and ran on well uh, to score, convinced by some four lengths. The tenth and final, the Dig Out Handicap, was the day's feature event. The second running of the Henry W. Jagai Odie JP Trophy race, an overnight allowance event for three-year-olds and up. A field of 14 reduced to 13 with a scratch of bridal blush from the tin draw. They're off. Fair start, Mamma Mia, as expected, shows the speed and comes away with that lead. Chased by KP Choice and Ultimate Machine, and these three now abreast as they charge down the far side. Volatility is three lengths further back, overtaken by Rhythm Buzz. Wall Street, a trader making progress on the outside. Rani Bangala races up with the band and take a punt. Taurus Boy runs the rail as they leave the half-mile marker and make their way into that turn. Power racing on the outside of Tekapun. Taurus Boy has now been shuffled right back through the field, overtaken by Big Big Daddy as they charge past the three. Up front. The war continues. KP Choice. There is Wall Street Trader, the first time runner in Jamaica. In the red silks now coming through to grab that lead. Mamma Mia chasing on his outside. But they're into it now. A quarter of a mile to go. Wall Street Trader just the leader from KP Choice. Rhythm Buzz searching for room down against the rail and has to be switched to find it. Mamma Mia is trying to kick in on the outside. Wall Street Trader in between horses. Here is Rhythm Buzz now kicking in on the outside. And Rhythm Buzz points over the foreigner. Wall Street Trader who is fighting right Right back it is Rhythm Buzz from Wall Street Trader. Rhythm Buzz will win it over Wall Street Trader. Then Money Monster, KP Choice, Mamma Mia is back in fifth. A good ride by Jockey Javenu Patterson aboard the much fancied Rhythm Buzz taking the day's feature event in what was a good run to beat Wall Street Trader who finished second, Money Monster in third and KP Choice in fourth position. This has been another edition of the Caymanus Park Highlight Show. We'll see you next time.